Captain, good evening. Um, of course, it's funny, there's a few people in this room tonight who, 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 who have a couple of people who mean things to me that I haven't seen for ages. There's a gentleman who I was in, who was in the nick with me 15 years ago. <laughs> he wasn't a prisoner. There's another guy in the room who knows a family that has shot me, actually. Not shot me, but took me back. Who I've known like 35 years of my life. And he, he, he's, he's behind the monitor there. And he knows a very family, a very very close to my family. And then there's some, some other people in here, some guys in here, young men in here, strong young men, who I knew their dad, uh, who was a marvellous man, God rest his soul. Uh, and, and all these sort of things. And, you know, he's, God's so good, isn't he? You know, and you think, wow, there's that, there's this. And the gentleman, I won't name him, who I was in prison with, it was like, it was, oh, I thought about him about six months ago. And bless him, he used to pray on handkerchiefs uh, and asked us to take them. They were blessed handkerchiefs. I don't know, they blow our nose or dry our tears or whatever. <laughs> but they were blessed, you know, whatever that meant. But it meant a lot. I've got my anky and it's blessed, you know. He's the key pit and he's it's fantastic. He's brilliant. Uh, and, and that amazing grace. Different version, I think, wasn't it? That amazing grace. Yeah. Uh, and when I was in, in Swaleside, it was. Um, I'll come back to that. Uh, I was born round here. I, I'm from Stockwell. Uh, and, and my family, my father um, was from South East London and he was a career criminal uh, involved with sort of the train robbers and, 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 and the twin, you know, that, that, all that sort of fraternity of people. And my mother's family, they were costermongers uh, and they come from the Elephant and Castle and they used to sell flowers and, and, and they used to have a piano in the house. And it was all lovely and so good, good, you know, I'm a London boy, I'm from the flats, I'm proud of it. And, um, and, and I was born just around the corner here. Uh, and when I was six, my, my father wanted to sort of better my life. Uh, and he took me out to live in Surrey and we went to a nice school. My sister made it, she was great, became a school teacher. My younger brother, God rest his soul, he loved it. And we was in Surrey, but I was a South London kid. Uh, and, and it was quite, not being disrespectful to anybody, it was very middle class, oh hello. Uh, and, and there was me <laughs> in this school, and I used to like have a fight, and I'm not that I was the best, but you know, I used to have a tear up and, and all things like that. And as I progressed through this sort of, this oddness of life, living in a bigger house, being at school, um, without being disrespectful, a lot of the guys I used to go to school with, their dads were policemen. And not there's anything wrong with that, I don't mean that, but my dad was a villain. Uh, and, and, and it was odd. And, and it was odd. And, and it came back later on in life, a few, a few funny things happened. And, uh, and I remember at the age of four, you know, I started nicking straight away out of Woolworths. Uh, and my dad didn't want me to be a criminal, but I, the, the most the thing that I could say to anyone listening to this in here is about the ancestral sin. The genetic value of my parents, parents, parents that came through to me. I didn't choose to be a criminal. I didn't choose to be an addict or a drug addict or whatever I was. It, it, it formed itself in me and it was second nature for me to nick and steal and rob and, and, and look at pretty girls and, and all that. And, uh, and it was odd. It, it, it wasn't get, I went to a lovely school and, and, and I just, you know, I couldn't wait to get back to the flats and, and get in trouble with the police and, uh, and, and things like that. And I learned to fight. And I weren't the best, but you know, I'd have a go. Uh, and, um, and then drink and drugs came. And, and I think when I was about 14, I, got, I had an uncle, God rest his soul. Not everyone's dead in my family, by the way. <laughs> but he, he's a schizophrenic. Uh, and we buried him last, um, last September. He was a lovely man. Uh, he was a beautiful man, my uncle John. And, um, and I believed I had schizophrenia. I didn't, but I believed I did. And I had these isms, you know, I was never comfortable, I wasn't happy in school, uh, and you know, I don't know, I just didn't feel right, and, and in drink and drugs, and, and that came into play. Um, and I was, you know, I was brought up in, a, in an environment where I remember, and I don't mean to decry my father here, but as a very young kid, I see some violence go on that weren't nice. You know, I was a baby and, and I shouldn't have seen it, and, but my dad didn't know any better, and, and my dad, God rest him, God, not God, God bless him, he, he's 80 years of age and, you know, he, he's a Christian man, but he, he still have a fight, my dad, you know, he's, a, he's got big hands on him like that, shoulders, and he's never lost that will, you know, not that he goes around fighting, but, you know, he's got that heart about him. And the spirit of the living God touched that man incredibly. 
I mean, like that man, I see the spirit of the living God touch that man. And anyway, we progressed through our sort of our fraternity and I, I came back to London and, and by the time I was could leave school, you know, drinking, drugging, smoking and, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I, I was a criminal, I was at it, I was nicking things and, and earning money and I got the flavour for money really got the flavour badly for money. And inside of me, I suppose if I looked at both sides of my families, my mother was a very peaceful, was a very peaceful, loving woman, and my dad was a lunatic. And I had it, and I didn't like it. I didn't like who I was. You know, I, I constantly had this shame and this fear and this, and this bizarre mind, and you know, and I thought, I'm not well, I'm not right. And, and, it, and it was a struggle for me to live on a day-to-day -day basis. So women, uh, um, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but sort of that, that weren't right. Relationships in my life wasn't right. And, and that was an area of my life, even as a Christian, that sort of dragged me back and, and I didn't like it. Because I believe as I met Jesus, I should have been set free. And then I began to learn, you know, I thought all Christians, had, when I first be, met Jesus, I'll get to that in a minute. I, was, I then continued in my sort of array of crime uh, and I'd done my apprenticeship, I'd done a little bit of burn in Brixton and Wandsworth uh, and um, I used to find prison quite funny actually. You know you could be a right naughty boy in the nick uh, and, um, and, and, and chaplains without being disrespectful, they, they was the ones you're headed for if you wanted a phone call or you wanted something. The chaplains was always a walkover as far as I was concerned. <laughs> but lovely men, you know, I, I, my grandmother was a devout Catholic, bless her. And I believe her, her prayers got answered. Uh, uh, and she prayed for me, and it was all, you know, me and all that and all that. And yeah, well, I'm just the water from Lourdes and St. Peter and St. Paul and this and that. And oh, Nan gives a few quid and I'll be off. <laughs> <laughs> don't cuss. That means don't swear. Don't cuss, she used to say. All right, Nan, drop me out. But I love my grandmother. And, um, and then I, I started to have this sort of thing that I wasn't right and, and I was out getting at it and, and I went to live in Spain. I'd had a few altercations with the police where I thought it was right that you run away because criminals, when they was wanted by the police, went to live in a place called Marbella and I went there. <laughs> uh, and, and it was a lot of nonsense. And I did, yeah, come on. <laughs> it's embarrassing when I think about it. But I smuggled drugs down there. And I was doing the right thing, I was getting a few quid, and um, I was wanted in England, and something tragic happened to me that, that, that changed the course of my life down there. My younger brother, I said, who, who passed away, he come to be with me, because my grandfather was dying, and he was having a, his girlfriend was having a baby. We, had a, we took loads of cocaine, and um, we had an argument, I loved him dearly. I loved him dearly. Uh, and we had an argument and he took my car and he went underneath a lorry and it killed him, stone dead. It, it cut him in half and, and it was, whoa, dear, what was all that about? And, 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 his, and his son, who's now 27, 26 years old today, you know, he's my brother and he was angelic, this kid. He, he, he was angelic. He was the my, nicest kid I've ever met in my life. He was like my mother. He was, he was gracious, he was bright, he was funny. Uh, and I loved him and, and when he died, it was, oh dear, and I blame God, you know, and I blame God, you know, nothing to do with the cocaine or anything like that, I blame God, you killed my brother. And I used to scream at churches uh, and, and, and things like that. 